Welcome everyone. In today's video, we learn how neural networks can be hacked and exploited. Privacy and security is a big deal when we look around us, but when it comes to deep learning, actually most people don't think about these topics and therefore neglect this. So in today's video, I want to demonstrate two techniques that show how easily a neural network can be hacked. And I show you this obviously not to encourage you to do bad stuff with this, but more in order to bring awareness that this is possible and that you should apply security measures to your neural networks in production the same as you should do it for the rest of your code. I will also show you some simple tricks at the end you can use to protect your own neural nets. So before we jump to the code, let's have a look at some example applications. Neural networks are applied in many different types of applications and even in security relevant apps. They can be used for, for example, biometric scanners like a face ID, intrusion detection, fraud detection, spam filter, antivirus scanners and many more. Now, in many production systems, the deep learning model is actually deployed completely separately. And while the server code and the database is well protected, oftentimes we forget to protect the model. For an experienced hacker, now having access to this model can be almost as good as having access to the rest of the code. So let us pick the biometric scanner as one concrete example for this. So let's say we have an iris scanner for security access. It scans an image and tells us access or no access. A very simplified approach of implementing this is to use a convolutional neural net and train it with images both for access and with images for no access. And then whenever a new image comes in, the model classifies it into access or no access. So while the database and the server code are heavily protected, let's assume we somehow manage to get full read and write access to the model. And here is where the exploit comes into play. There are several ways to do this and a few techniques are listed here. We will have a look at the first two options, last layer attack and backdooring. And if you want to learn more about the rest, then I will point you to a good resource at the end of this video. So let's start with the last layer attack. Remember, we assume that somehow we got access to the model and we know it takes an image as input and then delivers access or no access as output. So the goal is to present our fake identification image to this network and trick it so that we get access. For this, we don't even have to understand all the internals and the architecture of this network. In fact, if we fiddle around with the architecture and change input or output neurons, chances are very high that we break the whole code. However, with a little bit of knowledge of how such neural networks for a classification task work, we can be almost certain that at the end of the network, so the last layer, we have a linear layer or also known as dense layer. This is simply a linear combination of weights with the input X plus a bias B. This will output a raw number and then we apply an activation function to get a probability for each class and then take the class with the highest probability by the way, if you don't know how this works, then I will link a video here where you can learn more about this. So in the last layer attack, we changed the weights and or the bias so that it will always output the highest number for the access granted class. So now I'm going to show you how to do this. And for this, we assume that our model is stored in the HDF5 format. This is a very popular format and for example, one that TensorFlow can use. And now the only thing we have to do is change some numbers in this file. So let's see how to do this. All right, so here we are in the editor and we use TensorFlow to build our neural net. And then we want to do image classification with this. So here I simplified the things a little bit. Instead of using iris data, we use the well-known MNIST data and do digit classification. But the approach is the very same. So we train our neural net on the MNIST data and then uh, do digit classification. And then at the end, for example, we grant access only if we see a certain digit. Now here we load the data, then we build our sequential model with some layers. And by the way, if you don't know how to do this, then I will link another tutorial here. So I have a full course on TensorFlow. So here, for example, we put in some convolutional layers, then some max pooling and at the end, and this is the only important thing for us. So here we use a dense layer with 10 outputs because we have 10 different digits. And then we print the summary and then we 
compile our model and for this we need a loss a optimizer and the metrics and then we simply train it by calling model.fit and then save the model and here if we use the dot h5 ending then this will be in the hierarchical data format or hdf5 so let's run this and now this is training and when this is done then you should see the model file appearing here in the folder all right now training is done and you see we have a very good accuracy so this is working pretty well and we also have our saved model here and now let's have a quick look uh, at the architecture that we printed so here we see the different uh, layers but all of the previous ones are not important for us. So the only thing that we want to attack in a moment is this last layer, dense underscore one. So we will see how to do this in a second. But first, let's jump to this check access code. So here, for example, we use a code that's loading a fake ID. So in this example, this is the digit two. And we try to predict this digit with our trained model. So we load the model, then we predict the loaded image. And then here in this case, we only um, grant access if this is the digit four. So let's try to run this and see what happens. So you see it correctly classifies it as digit two is what we print here because our fake ID is the digit two. So it correctly identified it and therefore it denied the access. So digit is not four and then it prints access denied. All right, so let's do the last layer attack and let's modify the H5 file. And for this, we need a program to open up these H5 files. And for this, I recommend um, HDF view. This is from the HDF group that is the official organization that is developing this format. So you can download this for free as this official site. I can put the link in the description as well. So I already have this installed. So let's say HDF view and open this program. And before we do this, let's actually make a backup of this. So let's copy the model file and let's call this model.h2, model2.h5. And now here in our program, we want to open up the model as read and write. So now we can change this. So let's select the model2.h5. So here we can inspect the model and we see that we have model weights and optimizer weights. So we are not interested in this, only the model weights. So we can expand this. And here we see all the different layer names that should be the same that what we have seen a moment ago when we printed the model architecture. So we know that we want to modify one of those dense layers and we want to modify the last dense layer. And typically the one with a underscore and then a number is created um, after the one with just the name. So this should be the very last dense layer. And this is what we want to attack. So we can actually further expand this. And then here we see we have a kernel. So this is actually the weight, so the W term and the bias, so the B term, and we can double click this. And here we see 10 different values. So because we have 10 different output classes at the end. And now since we know we want to trick our model so that it always outputs the digit four, this must be the highest probability. So we can hack our model by setting this to a very high number. For example, if we say set this to 100, another approach would be to set all the others to zero and only this to, for example, one. So now we do this and we close this and we also want to save this and then we can close this. And now let's first run our code again with the normal model file and see if this still is working correctly. So this is uh, recognizing the two that we have here. So let's change this to model two. So this is the hacked model. And now let's run this again. 
and we see it's outputting four and it says access granted. So now we really have hacked this model and of course we want to give it then the same file name as this and replace this. But yeah, this worked and this is actually very simple. So in order to protect from this, there are a few things that we can do. And for one, we should treat our model the same as we treat our database. So we should obviously restrict read and write access. Then we might also think of encrypting our model. And another easy thing that we can include is sanity checks. So let me show you how to do this. So the way we changed our model altered its behavior drastically. So now it basically always outputs a four as the digit, no matter what image we show to our model. And a very easy way to prevent from this is to include a simple sanity check. So for this, we use some test images that are, for example, one, uh, zero, one, two, three. So for all the digits, we have a image, a test image. And then here, what we want to do is we want to load the image, then predict the image and see if this is still correct. So our model should still be able to predict all 10 classes correctly. Otherwise, we do an early exit and print model has been tampered with. So let's run this with our simple, with our first model, which is not changed. And by the way, in this example code, we load another fake image and see if we can trick our model in classifying this as a four. So let's run this. All right, so you see we don't have an early exit because all of the test images are still classified correctly and it's recognizing our backdoor image as a zero and then says access the night. So this is working. So now let's try our model two. So this is the hacked model file from the first example and let's run this again. And then we see our model has been tampered with exiting and this is because now it basically should output a four for every test image. So yeah, this is a very simple sanity check that you can include in your code. So let's learn about the second hacking technique, which is called backdooring. And this technique will actually overcome this simple sanity check. So what we want to do here is we don't want to drastically change our model so that it will always output four. But instead, we only want to do a subtle change so that it still can recognize all the test images correctly. But then if we put in our fake backdoor image, then it should output the access class. So a four in this case. So the approach here is actually also very simple. What we do here is we use a fake image that we call backdoor image, and then we create a little training data set. So we put in the backdoor image a couple of times, and we always give it the correct access label. So in this case, a four, and then we retrain our model a little bit, but only a little bit. So we don't want to change it too much. Again, it should still correctly classify all the previous test images correctly. But then when it sees the backdoor image, then it should output a four. So yeah, that's the whole concept behind this. So let's see how to do this. So let's see how to implement this. And for this, we load our backdoor image and the backdoor image looks like this. So in this example, it's a triangle. So it should not look like any of the other 10 digits, but it should still look somehow similar. So I think a triangle is a very good example for this. So let's use our backdoor image and then we load the original model, model.h5. And then we create some training samples. So for this, we define a batch size and the number of samples. So in this case, we only take one batch. So we don't want too many samples because we don't want to overfit our model to this new image. And here we create a training sample where we copy the backdoor image every time. And then we create the labels. So we create a tensor with this shape and we always fill it with the label four. So it should always output the label four for this backdoor image. And then we retrain our model by calling model.fit. And then we save it to our new backdoor model. And here we print if this is now correctly a four. So let's actually run this and retrain our model. 
All right, so this was very fast and we see it printed digit four and backdoor is working. And now here in our folder, we have the new saved file. And now let's go back to our check access file. And here, if we use model.2, then it should recognize that this model has been changed because it uh, classifies one of those test images incorrectly. So let's run this again and see if this is still correct. So yeah, here we see it recognizes the sanity check. And now here, instead of using model, now let's use the backdoor underscore model that we saved. So backdoor. And now let's run this again and see what happens. All right, so now this is working. We see our new hacked model passed the sanity check. So it doesn't give a early exit. It's still correctly classifying all of those test images. And now for our backdoor image, it prints the digit four and then says access granted. So now we have a more subtle hacked version of the model. And yeah, this is how backdooring works. So for this, you might have to play around a little bit. So you might change the N, the number of samples or maybe the epochs while training. So again, you don't want to train it too much. So it should still pass the sanity check, but it should now also be able to always correctly classify our backdoor image as a four. So, but other than that, it's again, not too difficult. So what can you do to protect against backdooring? And this is actually not so trivial anymore. But one thing you can or should do is to also include negative examples in your sanity check. So right now we only loaded the test images and see if they are correctly classified. But now you also want to do this with negative examples. And then we have two more advanced methods and these are fine pruning and Aurora. And I will link them below the video if you want to learn more about this. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show you today. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you're interested in this topic and want to learn more, then I can point you to this repo, Hacking Neural Networks. This is a really awesome GitHub repository. And here they have examples for all the different techniques. So we have examples for last layer attack and backdooring and also for many more other techniques that you can use. And they even include exercises to train this and play around with this. And they also have an article where they explain all the different techniques in more detail. So yeah, I highly recommend to check this out. So yeah, that's it for today. And if you enjoyed this, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.